Excellent! What's up everybody, Big Sweet here once again. Thanks for joining me. So today I'm gonna to be starting a new series of, of kind of techie videos. Um, you know, a little ways back I did the video on my home network setup and how I how I kind of set everything up with that. Um, now we're gonna be moving into more of the, the smart home device connectivity kind of realm. Um, starting with our product that we're gonna be installing today, um, we're gonna to be doing a video doorbell. Uh, this right here is the Google Nest Hello Doorbell, very similar to the Ring and other manufacturers of, of video doorbells, um, but I'm, I'm a big fan of, of the Google devices and the Google Nest stuff. Uh, I already have a lot of Google Home devices around the house, um, so we're gonna be installing this Google Nest Hello. Um, you know, down the road, we're gonna be installing a uh, Nest thermostat and the Nest Protect uh, smoke detectors and stuff, so, you know, a lot of Google Nest stuff to go along with the Google Home devices I have already. Um, I, I'm a big fan of, of that you know, smart home device connectivity, you know, being able to control a lot of things in your house from your smartphone or just you know, voice commands, you know, tell your Google Home to do something, turn something on and it does it. Uh, yeah, I just like that simplicity um, and it's cool. I'm a, I'm a techie kind of guy so I, I really dig that stuff. Um, so today we're gonna be installing this doorbell. Now one of the things you have to consider when you're installing one of these video doorbells is your existing uh, doorbell setup. Um, you know, my house here, uh, I found, didn't have a hardwired doorbell. Um, basically, it's just a wireless transmission. So the, the button on the outside of the door um, it, it's just a battery-powered uh, tra you know, transmitter. So you push the button, it sends a wireless signal to the inside unit. Uh, which is just a wireless receiver, and that's what chimes the, the doorbell when somebody pushes the button. Um, this particular unit right here, it, it requires a hardwired connection. Um, so I had to figure out a solution for that. Now, there's different ways to go about that. You can buy a, uh, a battery-powered unit. Um, Ring, I know, makes one. Uh, some other manufacturers might as well. I don't think that Nest has a battery-powered one yet. Um, I, I didn't see it, but I didn't want to go with a battery powered one anyway. I didn't want to have to worry about, you know, the battery dying because, you know, Murphy's Law, that battery is going to die when you need the camera. You know, when something happens, it's going to be dead and it's not going to pick up what you want. So I wanted to have a hardwired connection. So that leaves me really two options. I can dig into the walls, run power from the circuit breaker somewhere up to the doorbell. Uh, you'd have to put a transformer in there because it's, it's like 24 volts or something like that. So your, your house power is going to be too much. So it's, you got to get a step down transformer. So a lot of, a lot of wiring and stuff. I didn't really want to dig into walls too much. So I found another alternative. Uh, they sell for this camera an indoor power adapter. Now, the only caveat with this is it requires you to drill a hole through your wall from the interior to the exterior. So if you're not comfortable doing that, um, you might want to have a professional install this for you. Either way, if you're not comfortable with drilling that hole, you're probably not going to be comfortable with running wires. Um, so if that's the case, you might want to just get a professional to install one of these. But um, not a big deal for me. I do a lot of stuff around the house as it is, so I wasn't too uh, worried about drilling that hole. All right, we're going to gather up all the tools we need. We're going to head up and we're going to get this Google Nest Hello Doorbell installed. All right, as far as tools go, you're not going to need a lot of tools, but uh, here are a few that you probably will want to have on hand doing this job. You're going to need a drill with a long 3 8 inch drill bit. In my case, it was a 12 inch drill bit to get from the interior wall all the way to the exterior. You're also going to need a Phillips screwdriver. You probably want to have a tape measure to measure where you want to drill your holes at. Maybe a stud finder if you're you know, searching for that spot to drill through. Uh, you don't want to necessarily hit the studs. You want to try and find as much empty wall as you can. Uh, stud finder come in handy. And then lastly, you know, a hammer for running those uh, cable ties down the wall. Uh, in my case, I'm running it along the, uh, the trim of the door, so I'm just going to nail those cable ties into the uh, trim of the door. All right, now once you have marked where your hole is going to be, grab your drill and start going to town. I will say one thing before you drill this hole, you definitely want to know the location of any existing wires in that wall. 
Most doors are gonna have a light switch right next to that door on the inside. You want to know where the wire for that light switch is running. You do not want to drill into that wire. Um, a, you're gonna ruin the wiring in your house. Two, you can electrocute yourself. If you are not sure where the wires are behind that wall, err on the side of caution and have a professional install this for you. All right, so we have our hole drilled through the wall now. Uh, it's time to fish our power adapter through. Now, trying to get just this wire through, it's a little bit flimsy. Uh, might be a little difficult considering the length of wall that we're trying to pass through. Uh, so I have a, a stiffer piece of wire here. We're going to tape those leads to, run it through, and then we'll head outside and uh, wire this thing up to the doorbell. All right, we got our wires fished through the hole in the door frame now, and we're gonna mount the doorbell to the frame. Uh, this does come with two different mounts. Uh, one, if you wanna mount it flat, and then another one, if you wanna angle it. So sometimes, depending on the view you get, uh, you might wanna angle it in towards the door a little bit. I'm gonna try with just the flat uh, plate first, uh, see what that looks like, and then uh, if we need to, we'll add the angle plate. All right, so next up, we're going to connect our terminal wires to the back of the doorbell. Now, this is not powered yet, it's not plugged in, so make sure that when you're doing this, this is not plugged in yet, otherwise you're gonna electrocute yourself. Now, it doesn't matter which lead you put on to which terminal, uh, it'll work just fine. And you do want to install these facing up like this. You don't want to go from the other side because then you're going to put too much stress. All right, so there we go. We got our terminals on there. Now all we do, fish that back in to the wall. We connect to the top bracket and then push it in to seat it, and there we go. Peel off our sticker there, covering up the camera, and uh, we'll go plug it in and give it a shot. All right, now this indoor power adapter does come with 20 feet of wire, which I am not gonna need 20 feet of wire, but it also comes with some clips, so I'm gonna run this down the side of the door frame, and then down along the baseboard to the plug over there, and then we'll tuck the excess away uh, down the baseboards. But for now, we're just going to plug this in to see if it's working. All right, as we can see, the ring is lit up there. Uh, it is working. I know that because I had set this up down in the basement just to get everything hooked up to the network. Uh, and I just got a notification on my phone that said someone is at the front door. <laughs> so... We know it's working, uh, we'll give this a shot and uh, I'll set this up on the inside so you can see what it sounds like and looks like when somebody rings the doorbell. All right, so we're here in the kitchen. We're looking at one of the many Google Home devices I have around the house and I'll talk more about that in another video talking about uh, you know smart home connectivity kind of stuff. But most of the other devices around the house are just speakers, smart speakers that you can talk to, ask questions, uh, play music, whatever the case is. Um, but I bought this specific one here, the, the Home Hub, specifically for this doorbell because it does have a video display on it. Uh, so I can, you know, at a glance, see who's at the front door when it rings rather than having to open the door. You know, sometimes depending on what time of day it is, who's home, uh, you might not always want to go to the front door and open it. So, you know, this gives us the option to see who's there prior to opening it. One of the cool features is uh, I can just say, uh, hey Google, show me the front door. Okay, streaming front door. 
So now without even anybody ringing the doorbell, I can see who is at the front door. Uh, the, the Nest app will actually send me notifications when it sees things. Um, so if I'm not home and it's, you know, sees somebody on the front porch, it'll let me know. And then I can open up the app and I can actually have a conversation with that person, uh, even if they don't ring the doorbell. Uh, but I'm going to go outside right now and actually show you what it looks like and sounds like when I actually ring the doorbell. Daddy is at the front door. All right, now had I uh, been in here and someone else rang the doorbell, I could then hit the talk button there and find out what that person wants without ever opening the door. Um, you know, that's going to come in handy. Let's say you're not home. Or as I was kind of alluding to earlier, um, you know, maybe it's 2 o'clock in the morning and somebody you don't know is at the front door. Um, rather than going downstairs and you know, opening the door and potentially exposing myself and my family to danger, um, I can just open up the app or on here, ask that person, what the hell do you want at two in the morning? Because, um, you know, I know for me, if I'm opening the door at two in the morning, you're getting a much different reaction from me than you would if I opened the door at two o'clock in the afternoon. Um, so, you know, just eliminate that, you know, the chance of that danger altogether and just open up that app and ask that person what they need. Now you may have noticed when I rang the doorbell there on the display and on the speaker, it said daddy is at the front door. Um, one of the cool features of this particular camera is it has facial recognition. So as the camera sees different faces, it's going to send you a notification asking you if you know that person. And if you do, you can add them to your known people and assign a name to them. And then when they come over in the future, ring your doorbell, it'll actually announce them by their name. So it'll say, like, Bob is at the front door. Um, you know, cool little feature, um, you know, cool personalization that you can do with that. Not something that's absolutely necessary, but again, it's one of those cool things that I like about this particular camera. All right, now one of the things I really like about this camera versus let's say the Ring is this camera is recording 24 seven. The Google Nest uh, Hello is recording all the time um, versus the Ring, which is only gonna start recording when it has a triggering event. So when it sees motion or somebody presses the doorbell or you open it up in your live view on the app, that's when it's gonna start recording. So in those instances, you might miss something that happened before that triggering event. You know, maybe something that the camera didn't quite pick up, um, so you don't get that footage. Whereas with the Google Nest, it's recording all the time, you're still gonna get those triggering events, but then you can back the camera up. You can back that footage up and see what happened in, you know, in the minutes, seconds before that triggering event and maybe find something helpful. Um, and I really like that feature. Now with any of these video doorbells, uh, if you want to have your footage saved so you can go back and look through it, uh, you're going to have to pay some kind of a subscription fee. Uh, the Google Nest is no different. Uh, I think the cheapest plan they run is like five bucks a month and you get five days of uh, footage stored. Uh, now that's five days of continuous 24-7 footage. So you know anything, anything that happens, you're going to be able to look back through that five days and then you can pick any moment that you want and save that footage to your computer so you have it forever. So if something does happen, you save that to your computer, you have it. Um, now after that five days, it's going to get overwritten so that stuff's going to disappear. Um, you can go all the way up to 30 days of storage, you're going to pay extra for that. Um, in my opinion though, that five bucks a month for five days of storage, um, really good deal and it's going to cover you for most things that, that, that are going to happen. All right, guys, there you go. The install of the Google Nest Hello video doorbell. Um, pretty simple, pretty painless. Um, as I said, some people may not be comfortable drilling holes through their walls like that. Not a big deal for me. Um, but, you know, really simple to install, really simple to set up. The Nest app walks you through, makes it pretty idiot proof, like pictures of how to do things. Um, how to set it up through your Wi-Fi and all that stuff. Really, really simple, great product. Integrates with your Google Home Assistant. Also, if you, if you use Alexa, you can run it with that. Um, really cool, um, like I said, home connectivity, love it, smart home stuff. So um, that's all we got today, guys. Uh, as always, if you like what I'm doing, give me that thumbs up. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button up there. Stay up to date with any new videos we got coming out. We're going to have more in this series of smart home 
device connectivity stuff. So we'll catch you next time. Till then, live life and have fun out there.